doesn't define us like it does perhaps in the Midwest and the South. True. That it, I really believe. I tell I, people that, I, I agree with you 100%. That's I, why the South dominates college football. It's a bigger Well, that and the athletes. Yeah. You know, and, and, and that goes, to, not to interrupt you, but it goes to your point. These kids grow up in the South. And it's all about going to play at Auburn or Alabama or Clemson or Florida State or LSU. You know, if you're a boy from the boot, that's what you want to do. Um, and out here, it's a little, you know, I've recruited the whole country. So when you recruit the whole country, you get a feel for the different types of me mentalities oh, tell and me mindsets. That. So what's an L.A. kid? Uh, L.A. kid are, um, well, tremendously talented, but uh, a little bit more eclectic. You know, uh, may, I don't know if distract is the word, but more options, as you said, um, uh, the kids in the South, it's just, it's about ball. You know, it's about, they're, they're from rural towns. Uh, there's not a lot uh, of things to do. Uh, you know, you're really invested in your community. You're really invested in your school. You're really invested in getting to that great school in the SEC you want to play for. I think the East Coast uh, has some kids that are maybe a little bit uh, right between the L.A. kid and the, and, the, um, and the South kid. And then the kids in the Midwest, you know, they're, they're, they're from great families and they, you know, they're solid young men and they're, they're, they're dedicated and smart. So it's just different. But down South, and, and they, there's more of them. Down, there's more big dudes down South. <laughs> there is. I mean, there's some big dudes down <laughs> south there's not as many big dudes out here for some reason well what what you know um pete carroll had a little bit of a dynasty then it ends after about seven years and mac brown had a dynasty at, and it ended after about seven eight years and urban meyer at florida had it for and it ended about seven eight years nick saban's going on a decade and it's not weakening well he's got a, he, his system's amazing okay so let's talk about that belichick yeah. you know you i could make the argument gino oriema women's basketball mm -hmm. germany soccer right now mm -hmm. spurs patriots Alabama. They're all systems. They're not systems. star reliant. They're system systems reliant. Created by guys that have tremendous conviction in what they do, have had tremendous success, or, and they have resources. You know, that's another thing about the SEC and the Midwest. It's different than West Coast college football is the amount of resources that uh, are put into the programs. And so Nick is able to do basically whatever he, he wants to do. Right. Uh, Pay assistance, the, whatever the, he wants. Yeah, the academic restrictions are a little bit different, mm -hmm. you know, than, say, at Cal or Stanford or UCLA and, yeah. and throwing Northwestern or Rice and SME. A lot of schools. In yeah. Michigan, I don't want to I don't want to uh, to make that the point we're going towards. But these guys have created systems um, and cultures where – I'll tell you this. If you go to Alabama, okay, and you walk in the equipment room, and uh, the assistant equipment manager is folding a towel, and you ask him what, he, what he's doing, he'll say, I'm preparing to win a national championship. <laughs> he won't say, well, I'm, I'm folding this towel. And he, I'm folding this towel as best as a towel has ever been folded because I'm preparing to win a national championship. And so that attitude permeates the entire organization. I believe it's the same thing with the Spurs. I believe it's the same thing, as you said, with the Patriots. You know, they, there's a Patriot way. I was lucky to be with Bill Walsh in San Francisco. Oh, you were. And Steve Young and Ronnie and all the great ones and Jerry. And we called it 49er way. We just did things different. We just believed that we did things different. The way we practiced, the way we dressed, your shirt was tucked in. Heck, Bill Walsh cut a guy in the offseason because there was a rule when you were out on the practice field, whether it was offseason or in the season, you were working out, you had to have a shirt on. And he looked outside his office and he got out there running around without a shirt. Now, it wasn't Jerry Rice, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and we probably will never know the name, but he cut the guy because that was not the 49er way. You know, the way we ate. The way we traveled, it was just different. It was yeah. different. Yeah, and it's hard to create that culture. It and is. By the way, if you could choose today, Jim Mora joining me. I've gone back. My buddies and I talk about this because we're all, we're all football fans, NFL and college. My buddies tend to lean college football for coaches. It used to be, here's what I think the negative is in college. Every college assistant wants to be a coordinator, and every coordinator wants to be a head coach. In the NFL, the pension's better, and you got to pay them generally more. So you can create an NFL staff, and I can keep about 80% of it for a decade. Sure you can. In college, God, my linebacker coach wants to be a coordinator. I think the NFL, as a coach, I get more games, no boosters, no NCAA, and I can keep my staff longer. Mm -hmm. I would take an NFL job over a college job, but I hear all these coaches say, yeah, but I get 25 number one picks every year as a college coach. Jim, if you could start over, which way would you go, college pro? That's a great question, and I'm wrestling with that right now. 
as you know, I'm 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 on the streets <laughs> right now, <laughs> and so I'm I'm weighing all those pros and cons as I look at the rest of my career. Um, I loved the NFL, and it kind of feels like home to me. I spent 27 years in the NFL and was fortunate to be a head coach twice, and we had success. Um, but it's more business oriented. You know, but I, I did like it. You know, there was a structure to the year. You didn't have to recruit necessarily. So you had time off to be with your family where you weren't checking in on kids every, you know, hour or two hours. Uh, but the thing about college football that's so great is the impact you can have on young men. Yes. And I loved that more than anything. You know, of course, it's about winning and losing, and that's how you keep your job. But it's also about... Uh, making sure they get an education and they're set up for their future and they're socially conscious young men and they become the, the, the men that their parents always dreamed that they'd be. You know, I'm proud of at UCLA the fact that we took a graduation success rate that in 2011 when we got there was 59% and boosted it up to 86 and finished at 83%. That's a huge number. I'm proud that we had the highest GPA in, in UCLA team history. You know, all our guys are either going to the NFL or they're getting jobs. No one's on the streets. So you get rewarded by that. But it's vastly different. It's vastly different. I, I think, for me, uh, I'd love either one. And I pour myself into either one. Yeah. But uh, I've loved that. I've loved the impact that I've had on the families and the kids. Hey, by the way, let me just throw a Sam Darnold thing out. You faced him a couple times. Oh, uh, and I've n- I've not enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, I've not enjoyed it. He's, I've enjoyed watching him play. Yes, just not in person. Um, he's different than Josh. They're he, both very different. Uh, he he's a little more reckless. Little more. Uh, he's a playmaker. You he's got him, a little Brett Favre, Brett Favre to him. Like when you when you Young look at him, him on tape. And then you watch him in a game. Mm-hmm. Is it like I, I had a coach that faced him said, you know, you watch him on tape and then you watch him in a game and he's just cl- more clever in person. Yeah. He just does stuff you can't really prep for. You know who was like that? Marcus Mariota was like that. You'd watch Marcus on film and you say, we can defend this guy. And then you'd get on the field with him. You say, I have no idea how we're going to defend this guy. Great feet. Yeah. And Sam was same with Sam. Uh, clever, gutsy, creative, competitive. Uh, can can make plays on the run, uh, fearless. You know, I, I think he's what I say. He's a gym rat. You know, I think he's the kind of guy that if you put a basketball in his hands and put him at the three point line, he's going to make four out of five. If you put him at the foul line, he's make nine out of ten. If you put him in the batting cage, he's going to you know he's going to hit home runs. He's going to spray the ball over the field. If you take him down to the wedge and you say, hey, jump out there and, and body surf this ten foot break, he's going to do it. If you take him, you know, up to El Porto and you say, hey, jump on this you know board and surf, he's going to do it. He's just a guy that. He's a very natural athlete, and, uh, you know, he and Josh are just vastly different. But they're friends. Well, they're friends, and they can both, you know, people always say, who's going to be better? Why can't they both be the best? (laughs) You know, I mean, it's a debate, you know, Peyton Manning or or, uh, Tom Brady. They're just different dudes. They're great. They're both great, you know? I mean, (laughs) it's different, but they're both great. Yeah. Hey, it's great seeing you, man. You too. Jim Mora, uh, he's out there. Dude can recruit, cares about kids. I love talking. I can talk football all day. Well, I, and and you know what? I'm right now. I'm I'm trying to maybe get back in the league. You know, I, I think that, that like I said, that's home for me. And uh, been a head coach ten years, and I feel like I'm finally matured to the point where I get it. You know, it takes a while to get it. I feel I finally got it. Good seeing you, bud. You too, pal. Jim Mora. Uh, coming up next, the catch rule. Interesting how Mike Tomlin yesterday talked about it, and Bill Belichick.